Socrates was born in 470 BC, and he could be called the father of Western philosophy, unless you want to call Plato that. That's fine too. What does Socrates have in common with Jesus, Buddha, and Kim Kardashian? None of them have written any primary source material. Well, I think Kim Kardashian has a book, but if it's written in intelligible prose, it was most certainly ghostwritten. This means that everything we know about Socrates was handed down from others who wrote about him. This leads us to what is known as the Socratic problem. The Socratic problem is quite simply that we have no way of knowing what the actual Socrates was really like. The three sources of info on Socrates are Aristophanes, Xenophon, and Plato. And each of these sources paints a very different picture of the man. Aristophanes was a contemporary of Socrates, however, his depiction of him was very critical and satirical. His play, The Clouds, featured Socrates in a less than favorable light. And some say his play was a contributing factor in his execution. Aristophanes painted Socrates as a sophist, someone who dishonestly persuades people for financial gain, and in much line with the pre-Socratics, focusing on elemental and natural philosophy. Some discredit Aristophanes' depiction of Socrates because it was so critical, but it's important to remember that Socrates was killed for some reason, so it may well have been the reason Aristophanes suggests, namely, disbelieving the gods and corrupting the youth. Frankly, Socrates probably was very annoying and a very controversial man. Xenophon was friendly towards Socrates in his writing, making him out to be nothing like Aristophanes claimed. Xenophon, too, seemed a bit biased, ignoring anything that could possibly be contemptible about Socrates, and thus painting a rather simple, one-sided picture. It's Plato's Socrates, however, that we are particularly interested in, not only because his works are the most significant, both in impact and scope, but because they are possibly also the most accurate. While it's nearly impossible that Plato's Socrates is exactly as Plato depicted him, Plato certainly gave us the most balanced depiction. The best place to start to understand Socrates is the Apology, where he's making a defense for himself before the Athenian court. Though it can't truly be called a defense because all he really did was anger the jurors and ensure his execution. In his speech, Socrates appeals to the quest given to him by the oracle at Delphi. He tells the story of a friend who visited the oracle and returned with the revelation that Socrates was the wisest man alive. Socrates was in disbelief of this and immediately set off to find someone who was wiser than himself. This is the content of many of Plato's dialogues. What Socrates discovers is that while he does not know much, he is at least aware of his ignorance, while others, believing they are wise, are actually worse than he. He also tells us about his divine sign. That is a special indication he gets from the gods whenever he's about to do something that he shouldn't do. In fact, his divine sign told him not to prepare a speech for his trial. Bringing up the oracle and the divine sign probably served to anger his jurors more than help his case. Socrates sums up himself best in calling him a gadfly. Just like a fly on a horse, Socrates pesters and angers Athenians to wake them from their dogmatic slumber, to steal a phrase from Kant. Sadly, this worked all too well, and Socrates was given a choice, exile or death. He chose death, and the rest was history. The character of Socrates is summed up well in another Platonic dialogue, the Symposium. One of Socrates' lovers enters the scene and begins to give a sarcastic ode to Socrates. While he makes his points ironically, the events are supposed to be taken as fact. He explains that Socrates is physically strong, mentally unshakable, and not bothered by heat or cold. He is not given to bodily lusts, as we learn through an intimate tale of the lover trying to unsuccessfully seduce him. We also learn that he's able to drink without getting drunk. All of these things make out Socrates to be something like a hero. Though just like a hero, he certainly had his flaws. Socrates himself is an interesting character. However, much of him we know historically. Even more interesting, though, is what Socrates becomes in the hands of a skillful playwright. This is what we're going to talk about next time. Before that, having looked at the first true Western philosopher, I'd like to take some time to discuss what a philosopher is. Socrates is considered the first Western philosopher not because of the content of his teaching, or not only, but because he saw the implications of philosophy on everyday life. Socrates was a man whose beliefs and actions were inextricably woven together. Philosophers are not always this way, but there is something worth admiring in the idea that philosophy was born when people really cared about the way they lived their lives. Come back next time for Plato and as many of his ideas as I can cram into one video.